Yeah, well, my, listen, my first my first pick is going to be playing it safely. Um, that it's a GC battle and that Primoz Roglic wins the stage. Uh, plus 300, it's a bit expensive, but based on what I've seen today, based on the interview afterwards, his confidence. Hi, I'm Spencer Martin, along with Johan Bernil, and this is Outcomes. Outcomes is not an online gambling operator or a gambling site of any kind. We are simply here to provide information about sports betting for entertainment purposes only. It is a responsibility of all visitors to this podcast to check current local laws in their area or country before doing any gambling online. It is your responsibility to know and follow your local laws in place. Although we try best to provide accurate information on outcomes, we cannot be held responsible for any inaccurate or incorrect information which is mentioned on this show. If you place any bets based on the conversations on outcomes, you confirm or understand that it is possible to lose some or all monies used when betting on sports or doing any gambling. You cannot hold outcomes responsible for any such losses. Our podcast is here to provide entertainment and should be viewed as that and nothing more. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody, welcome back to Outcomes. We're predicting stage 20 of the Volta Espana. We'll get Johan's take on who's going to win and how that's going to play out in one minute. But first, Johan, I'm going to pick your brain about today's stage 19. Primoz Roglic wins on a steep... I mean, it's a perfect Roglic stage. It was not flat, but there was one climb. It was not overly hard racing. It was a small breakaway. They get to the bottom of the climb. Red Bull Bora Hansgro, his team just absolutely blows it up on the climb. Roglic rides away for the stage win. Not exactly shocking. That was our prediction. But kind of what surprised me was how big the gaps were. I mean, some of the biggest gaps we've seen on a summit finish so far at this race. David Godou is second at 46 seconds. I did not see that coming. Mateusz Schelmo is a third, 46 seconds. Enric Mas fourth, 50 seconds. He got passed by both those guys in the last 100 meters. Loses time bonuses there. So falls um, a minute, loses a minute to Roglic. Falls a minute further behind. And then Ben O'Connor, the race leader, finally loses this jersey. Lost 149 to, a, 149 to Roglic. I guess that's 159, nearly two minutes with the time bonuses included. Roglic now re- leads the race by 154. Another surprising thing, though, Ben O'Connor still in second, mm. and he's in front of Enric Moss by a not insignificant margin of, if I'm doing math correctly, 26 seconds, and he's a minute in front of Richard Carapaz. So there's a good chance O'Connor finishes on the podium. What what were your big surprises from the day, or like what what did you take away from this? Yeah, um, the the gaps. Um, you know, I I I agree with you. This was a Roglic finish. He already won here. Uh, in 2020, uh, in front of Richa Carapaz. Um, I mean, the big surprise was the amazing confidence that Red Bull had in him. Uh, you know, leading it out, leading it out like that from the bottom of the climb was crazy fast. And then basically, they went away with three guys: Dani Martinez, and Vlasov, and, and Roglic. And it was from then I was game over. Basically, not nobody could go. Um, but then still, you know, um, Roglic, the, the moment that Vlasov goes on the side and Roglic gets his own pace, uh, it was still more than four kilometers to go. So, uh, we've seen him do this already in, in this world. I like take a gap and then kind of stagnate today was not the case. He, he was going faster and faster. Um, I think it's clear now who's going to win this Vuelta, right? I mean, barring anything happening tomorrow, uh, he's now almost two minutes ahead of Ben O'Connor, uh, 220 on Enric Mas. Uh, these guys are not coming back. Uh, plus, there's a time trial left, 24 kilometers. So, uh, I mean, we have to say, you know, I mean, hats off to Primoz Roglic, you know, what, what a guy, what a comeback guy, right? I mean, after... After uh, crashing in the tour, heavily injured, starting with doubts, uh, this is one of the best performances of Primoz Roglic. As, as a matter of fact, he did uh, a minute. He went a minute faster than four years ago on this same climb. And having uh, having in mind that that same stage was stage uh, eight or nine four years ago, this is now at the end of the Vuelta. Um, amazing performance. I think it's 6.75 watts per kilo, um, over almost 30 minutes, which is, you know, it's up there with the best, uh, you know, this is, this is a podium performance of the Tour de France probably. Um, so yeah, I mean, finish four minutes behind Tade at the, uh, summit finish the tour with those numbers. 
That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was different. But uh, but no, I mean, he's most likely going to win his fourth Vuelta, making it even with Roberto Eras, who's the only rider who won it four times. So this is Mr. Vuelta España, right? Uh, and, and I think hats off to him. Uh, after all the setbacks, being able to come back and always motivating himself and, uh, and you know, wins the, wins the Grand Tour last year uh, with the Giro. Uh, this year, he's going to win one again. So, um, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess something could... He could, it's he, could, pretty he, much... he could potentially have won the, the Vuelta last year also even, you know, if... if yeah, 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 but... <laughs> I will say Jonas Finigo was pretty, pretty good in that last week. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been a tall order, but I do kind of wish they just all would have raced it out. Um, <laughs> of course it's Primus Roglic. So he could get lost tomorrow. He could crash. He could forget. They could drive to the wrong start town and the race starts <laughs> without him. Like anything could happen. So we don't want to <laughs> crown him yet, but I do think he won the Vuelta España with this performance. And yeah, as you said, I, I thought he's going to stall out because that's, kind of what we've seen in the past when he had about 28 seconds i thought all right 28 second gap plus time bonus like it's all looking good and he just kept pulling that gap out which is actually not normally what we see from him um we potentially could be seeing like some of the best form he's ever had it does it's kind of crazy to think about it because he's only fin only finishing 46 seconds in front of david godu but this might be the highest level primus roglic has ever been at when we just look at the numbers so it seems unlikely. Um, I guess we'll go to stage 20 in one minute, but just two things I wanted to mention before we go, David go do incredible sitting in fifth, something to think about because he's got a lot of time to make up. But the thing that really struck me is last time they came here, as you said, 2020, like he was fighting tooth and nail with Richard Carapaz on these climbs. He actually rode the course slower than Carapaz, but won the overall through time bonuses. Carapaz finished 103 behind Roglic today. So he's he's riding the climb about the same speed as he was in 2020. And then Roglic has gotten so much better in the four years since. While Carapaz is kind of, you know, he Carapaz is having a great race here. Like nothing, I'm not trying to drag on him, but he's just kind of st stayed at the same level while well, these guys also, have gotten know, better and better. Our, in the defense of Carapaz also, he did almost all the work on this climb. You know, he, he attacked, he counterattacked, and then he basically set tempo. And, and we could clearly see that, uh, I think Carapaz also a little bit the same, like with Enric Mas, he, like the last seven, 800 meters, he cracked and, uh, it was very steep. So, um, do they yeah. regret yesterday? That was the thing I was, what I was thinking about when I was watching the stage. Well, that was a lot uh, of energy. Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, it was, it was, I, I don't really understand why he did that. Um, the only, the only explanation I have, and I said it yesterday was that he thought that he, he, they could drop O'Connor and, and get on the podium because there would be collaboration between all the other favorites. But other than that, it didn't make much sense and it was very unlikely to happen. So. Um, I mean, but like four people rotating through for 45 kilometers. I mean, this is yeah. a juniors. There was a big peloton at the start of that climb. <laughs> like Ben O'Connor had people with him. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Then also nice to see that Lambda is back on, uh, on a yes. good after a, a really bad day yesterday. That was, I did not expect that. I, I thought that he would keep declining. So I don't know what was wrong yesterday um but today he looked uh, a lot better finished really strong also and then i'm really impressed also with skelmose you know skelmose is um you know probably one of the best uh, of the rest in the last three four stages i think he was with the top three uh of the gc all the time now the last week and always finishes very strong every single uh finishing climb so uh, it, it looks good for him um i, I think skelmose is going to win the the white jersey yeah, I have to agree with Rob Hatch's awkward <laughs> phrasing yesterday on the cycling podcast that he does look like the most attractive rider at the moment in this Vuelta. He just is, I've been shocked at how well he's finishing off these steep climbs and he looks like he's getting fresher and stronger yeah. as we go through here. Um, we should say, yeah, Landa rounded out the top five on the stage, 57 seconds back. Um, so seven seconds behind Moss. And then we're just dropping bread crumbs for the day's predictions. Eddie Dunbar, seventh. Pretty good considering he's not riding for GC. Really good, yeah. Sepkus eighth, one on one back. 
And then Matthew Riccatello, 11th, 130 back, not running for GC, and started to climb at the back of the group, basically. So that's mm-hmm. an incredible ride to finish that high up after. Can you, like, he must have just been dodging dropped riders the whole time up. Yeah, he did. He did a really good climb, uh, the last climb. He was all the way in the back. And I thought, I say, okay, yeah, you know, he's on the limit. But, uh, and he got, he got actually dropped straight away. Also, I think he just went his own pace and went faster and faster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty interesting. So, do you have anything else to say about today's stage? And also, uh, we should say it was kind of easy ish. I mean, it's just what we thought. It was easy ish. And then that helped Roglic because when he goes hard for 20 minutes, it's very hard for anyone to stay with him. Yeah. 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 Easy ish. Uh, I, I, you can say that to me, Spencer. Don't, don't say that if you go visit the World Cup on the phone. Let me happy with you. <laughs> I, I will say that's one thing when you're in person, when you see the end of these stages, it really gives you a feel for how just destroyed yeah. people are. Like yeah. they, they yeah. look like zombies at times. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's easy for us to sit here in our studio and say, oh, yeah, 160, <laughs> 164 kilometers with 8,000 feet of climbing. That'd be so easy. Um, yeah. I was just telling Johan before this, I got roasted by a world tour rider this morning. So it really puts it into perspective how fast they're going. So tomorrow, Stage 20, hardest day of the race, I think. Um, it looks yeah. like the hardest, and I think on paper it's 5,000 meters of climbing. So 5,075 meters of climbing, exactly. N- close to 20,000 feet. There's yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categorized climbs and 172 kilometers, and the last climb is 8K at 9% average. Uh, that's an incredible, incredibly steep average gradient. And then, like, it feels like every climb we've said at this race, First K is not that steep. So if you take the last 7K, it's actually probably a double digit gradient steepness climb on average, which is incredibly uh, brutal. I'll list off the odds from Unibet in Europe. I'll call it better prices when I see them in the US and we'll get your take on how this is going to play out. Primus Roglic is the favorite at plus 300. Enric Mas at plus 500. Richard Carapaz at plus 700. David Godou plus 1200. Sepp Kuss plus 1400. Eddie Dunbar plus 1,700, Mika Landa plus 2,000, Matea Schelmoza plus 2,000, Matthew Riccatello plus 2,200. It goes on and on. Um, There's a few we'll call out for sure from there, but we won't list them. Johan, this is a tricky, tricky stage to predict because I'm not quite sure if it's breakaway or GC. How do you think it's going to play out? Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, my first first pick is going to be playing it safely. Um, that it's a GC battle and that Primoz Roglic wins the stage. Uh, plus 300, it's a bit expensive, but based on what I've seen today, based on the interview afterwards, his confidence, uh, if, it's, if it's all the GC riders amongst each other, I, I, I can't see who can beat him. Uh, you, could say, you could argue that say, okay, he has a comfortable lead, he can just manage the effort, doesn't really need to win the stage. Uh, if he's there, he's going to want to win. Um, you know, those, the, those times are gone that the, the guys just calculate and don't want to win stages. Well, he has won three stages now, right? Three stages. Yeah. Three stages. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure he will, he will want to win a fourth and maybe the last, the last day, the time trial too. I don't know. Um, so Primoz Roglic is my first choice, uh, plus 300. Yeah. It's a little expensive, as you say. It, and you can easily get too cute here. I mean, I think as we're doing this show, I can hear the the media rustling in my ears and it's, oh, it could be a raid stage. Maybe they'll attack Roglic early. The Spanish, <laughs> the Spanish alliance that is always talked about <laughs> that never really actually happens. The problem is you're, there's no team strong enough to put Primoz Roglic under pressure on a stage like this. Maybe if it was an easier stage, but mm-hmm. when it's this hard on the climbs, if, if, Movistar has their team pacing. Roglic is in the wheels, and he's not—he's not under pressure because yeah. he's so much stronger than the the Nairo Quintana is on the front for Movistar. So Spencer, we saw today that when his guys started to pace on the last climb, nobody else was able to follow. They went away with three guys. So yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's what I was. And next, next thing I was going to say is, it's the hardest stage of the race. He's the strongest rider in the race and he has the strongest team in the race. I mean, if Martinez and Vlasov were in full form, like fully fit for this whole race, they'd probably be going one, two, three in the GC. Like Martinez and Vlasov are incredibly good riders. As we saw, it kind of reminded me of Jumbo Visma at the 2023 Tour de France on the Tourmalet, if you remember that, where they just kind of rode away from everybody. But their team is just so much stronger. So yeah, 
Roglic gets in trouble, let's say he's dropped, well, those guys can just pull him back on because they're incredible. They're like they're by far the best team at this race. It's a it's a Roglic S Summit finish. If it's a GC day, I would have a hard time sitting here and saying uh, I you can't. I think I couldn't pick Enric Moss after today like that. It's just so much clear. It's so clear that Roglic is the best climber at this race. I think that's correct to, to pick him. But if it's not GC, that's mm-hmm. when things get interesting. And it, this is why it's such a tricky stage. I'm just looking at the GC right now. There's people, there's, let's say, Mika Land in ninth, 640 back. Pavel Sivakov, 10th, 739. Sepkus, 11th, defending champion, 1051. Adam Yates, 12th. None of these people care about these places, 9 through 12. They're, it's their last day of racing. They also don't care about the time trial in stage 21. They will be in the breakaway or they will try to get in the breakaway because they have nothing else to race for. They're not going to sit in the GC group and try to win it from the GC group. Everyone learned their lesson today. I, I'm going to go Sepp Kuss. Gets in the break, wins the stage. He was climbing pretty well today. Um, he has nothing else to ride for at this point. He's not going to ride to finish in the top 10 because he's so far behind 10th. It's not realistic at this point unless he gets in the move. I'm going to go Sepp Kuss to win at plus 1400 from the breakaway not bad would also be quite a statement for the defending champion to win you know yes the the difficult stage i mean it doesn't depend on i mean it's, it depends how how good he is uh he seemed okay today seemed better um also spencer you have to take into account you know to go in the breakaway you have to be a good climber you know and to be able to stay there because before the last climb there's all these climbs uh, there's two got one climbs already before um so we're going to see climbers all the names you just you just saw right i mean you just you just uh, named because anybody else is going to be they, they can go in the break um because the first 34 kilometers are you know slightly uphill but it's a cat three climb so a lot of the riders can go but after that it's game over for those guys you know um it will only be the best climbers who stay in front Sepkus is, is is one of them um uh, my second choice uh, is going to be uh, Mark Soler. I think he's almost surely going to be in the break. Uh, he's in the King of the Mountains jersey. Uh, unless there is some kind of an, uh, agreement between the two teammates, him and Jay Vine, um, most likely they will. They could both be in the breakaway. And then it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the King of the Mountains <laughs> Uh, but just, you know, Soler, Spanish, uh, you know, he's going to fight for that jersey, I think. And then once he's in the break, man, you never know with him. We've seen that on Lagos of Covadonga. So uh, Mark Soler at plus 3,300 would be my second choice to win from breakaway. He's actually plus 3,400 on FanDuel and Koos is plus 1,600. So better prices on both of those riders. I mean, on the surface, I want to say no way. Like Mark Soler, he can't win against these guys. But if you go and look on paper, Let's look at his performances in this race. He actually is one of the best climbers out of the breakaway. Mm-hmm. He's very, I, so, something about the way he rides always makes me think he's slower than he is, but he's going, he's traveling very fast. That's a very good price. I'm, I'm very intrigued how this KOM situation plays out. Part of that partly concerns me because if he's sprinting against Jay Vine for every KOM point, that's not great for the final climb, but there, as you say, there must be some alliance made. It's some deal. I mean, they're one point apart, so they could just say we're both going to go in the move and sprint it out. That would seem a little silly because one of them, maybe one of them will well, concede you know, the points for the other if they work for them. Having said that, Spencer, you know, while we're talking now, you know, we could also have perfectly, uh, I mean, both Mark Soler and Jay Vine are good enough and have the legs to be in the break. Yeah, so will. It yeah, is, and the is, motivation. It is highly likely that both of them will be in the break. Uh, I, if I'm the director of that team, I'm saying, hey, guys, listen, we're not sprinting against each other. One guy goes for the KOM and then does the job for the other one. So so yeah. could potentially take the points and then work for Jay Vine in the final to uh, to win the stage. Because Soler already has a stage win. I'm, yeah. I'm altering our sheet right now. Vine has a stage or Solar has a stage win, so he's not going to care as much about that. You're right. That'd be a big deal for him to win that jersey. And I'm just seeing Jay Vine at plus 4,500 on FanDuel. That's a really mm-hmm. good price. 
it, you're right. There's okay, no so way I'm, they. Uh, I'm going to change my, my if that's allowed. Uh, yeah, no, it's not allowed. It's not. <laughs> not Mark Soler, but Jay Vine. Okay. You know, yeah, there's no room for like reasonable discussion here. Let me check the odds. What is the mountain classification? Solaire's minus 230. So the market's already priced that in. Interesting. Um, yes. Okay. Vine. That's better. Much better. Plus 4,500. Right. Because Solaire is not going to go sprint out, sprint his teammate. And then even if he does that, he's not going to win the stage anyway, because he's going to be too tired. A deal has to be struck. My next pick is Eddie Dunbar plus 1700 on Unibet. Where is he on FanDuel? I've lost that page, but I, I'm picking Eddie Dunbar because I'm looking at today's results. As I said, seventh place, that's a really good climbing performance from a rider that's not really in the GC. He's 13th, thir 13 and a half minutes down. Like he's not staying in the group. Like he's probably going to be in the breakaway. And the way to think about these breakaway wins is, you know, like when you're being chased by a bear, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You have to be faster than the people you're with. And can he, is he faster than the people he's with in the breakaway? There's a good chance he is. Um, and he's plus, you know, plus 1400 on FanDuel, plus 1700 on Unibet. I'm going to go with Dunbar. Yeah, today was a really good performance uh, to be up there in seventh place, only a minute behind Primos. Uh, beating some of the other GC contenders, uh, he must be on really good form. So that's a rider who can uh, will be allowed to go in the break. He he already has done it before. Uh, tomorrow is a matter of okay, if you have the legs, you're in it. You know, it's it's that simple. Uh, tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. That, I like and that one. That's good. Do you have another one that's not Jay Vine? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm not gonna, I mean, Adam Yates, um, you know, he's, he's one of those riders who can, who can pull it off. Where does he sit in GC? Uh, I think he's 11th, I think. No, he's 12th. He's 12th yeah. And he doesn't oh, care. He's 11 half minutes down at 12. Cannot, he cannot get in the top 10. So, um, you know, he's, he's four minutes behind the top 10. Um, you know, and he's a guy who can finish it off. So that's somebody I, I would definitely also look at if I have to choose another one. He's plus 2,500. I mean, all these guys like Yates, Coos, and Dunbar. I mean, specifically Yates. It's like a cornered animal, like a wounded animal. Like what? He, he, there's no nothing more dangerous than a GC rider that's on decent form with nothing to lose. So he, he could very well win it out of the move. What gets interesting is if all these guys are up the road and they're gaining time back, you know, who blinks first? Like, <laughs> is, is FDG going to start pacing? Because they're going to start inching into these. They're going to start eating into these guys that are in f sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second. Um, yeah. And so you're going to start seeing like EF's going to get nervous because Carapaz's potential podium is going to be in trouble. Enric Moss could get nervous. So is Movistar going to pace on these climbs? So you could actually start to see this breakaway is so hard that it then delivers Primus Roglic to a stage win. And we're back right where we started. Yeah, at Roglic I, I, plus 300. You know, the guys that are outside of the top 10, Spencer, they, you know, it's 10 minutes, 13 minutes. They need to come to the last climb with like three, four minutes at least. Uh, and still, um, you know, they're not going to get... I mean, unless it's a really big, big, big group, but you know, on, on mountain stages like that, big groups, it's, 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 it's not likely. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, O'Connor, Mas, Carapaz, Godu, I don't think they would be that worried, man, because they know that they're going to be with the first guys and that these, the, the, the guy from the breakaway are going to lose time anyway. So, um, they, if, if, for example, Yates is in the break, he, he would need a, six, seven minute lead at the bottom of the last climb to be a threat and, and still would not be you a think you would need that much time adam yates on a for, day like that where it's not necessarily easy no in no, the no i mean for, for, for to threaten the podium oh, oh okay yeah, yeah yeah to threaten yeah. the podium right uh to win yeah. the stage no to win the stage that that's i mean if adam yates gets at the bottom of the last climb with three minutes he can win uh but to threaten the podium 
he needs he needs a lot of, uh, he needs a lot of time, and that, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, where it gets tricky is Red Bull is not going to like. What do they care about pulling this breakaway back? Uh, we don't listen. If you listen to the interview of Roglic today, uh, he clearly said, "Yeah, he said I didn't I didn't really want the stage, but then a few <laughs> of my teammates ignored ignored what I wanted, and they said, you know, while we're here just to pull, there's nothing else we can do. We don't listen to you. We pull." And that's why <laughs> <laughs> you seem kind of irritated in that interview. <laughs> he's a, he's a mysterious man. Maybe it's all a smoke screen and they're going to, he's wanting us to think that they're going to pace tomorrow. He can't even control his team. These stage wins are falling into my lap. I can't do anything about it. Well, yeah, Johan, should we do a few head to heads before we get out of here? Also for tomorrow, for example, what you also could say is, listen, Red Bull, uh, they don't have to save anything. It's it's game over. They don't need to save anything for the day after, right? So they can give everything they have to to control the stage. Um, and then if on the last climb, if he has two riders left, which is you know Vlasov and Rodriguez, so we could potentially see a scenario where where, where Red Bull tries to control uh, for the stage win. It's not excluded. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're covered. That's why we've picked yeah, exactly Chris Roglic. Strongest yeah. rider on the hardest. I know, I know, like a lot of people will say, oh, he's, he's actually pretty vulnerable on hard stages, but he's not exactly racing Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vindigo here. I, I still like him to beat this yeah. GC group that he's with. He's pretty so, solid. He's pretty solid. Yeah. So we're, we're going back to this one. Th this one stings from today. Alexander Vlasov, these are on uh, DraftKings, no head to heads yet on FanDuel. Alexander Vlasov minus one forty, Valentin Peripantra plus one hundred. We lost. We we got burned there yesterday. Yeah, because Vlasov kept riding. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to do the same. No, uh, Vlasov. I mean, I I don't know. I don't understand why he kept riding. Um, where is he in GC? He's far he's fifteenth. Yeah, fifteenth. Yeah. <laughs> That's nothing for Vlasov. I, I think he's, I think Perry Pantra beats him, right? Tomorrow. Well, I mean, we, that's what I thought today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he looks, he looked okay. You know, he was, he was going, man. I mean, uh, that was fast, like really fast. Because when Vlasov started to pull, that's when they took the majority of the time on Henrik Mas. Yeah. They, he brought, he brought it like to 30 seconds. Um. I Let's go Vlasov. Vlasov. Okay. Yeah, I guess why argue with his motivation? Just yeah. he showed us that he's going to keep riding. Yeah. This one's interesting. Christian Rodriguez, minus 140. Lorenzo Fortunato, plus 100. I'm going to guess they finished together today. They finished. So exactly 14th and 15th. <laughs> They're probably both going to try yeah. to be in the breakaway tomorrow. Yeah. I think Christian Rodriguez. He looks yeah, good. Yeah, I, th I looks thought he looked good. really good. Yeah. All right. Next one is. Ooh, this one's good. Eddie Dunbar minus two eighty. Matthew Riccatello plus two hundred. Mm. Not impossible that Riccatello beats Dunbar. Uh, it's a hard stage. Uh, based off based off today's Eddie Dunbar. Yeah. I mean, Riccatello could miss the move too. He's like young. Yeah. He's not a Grand Tour debutante, but he's close. Like, uh, it's not it's not guaranteed he's in that breakaway. All right. So, Dunbar, next one. Enric Moss, minus 250. David Godou, plus 175. I, this, I, I, seems, I don't know. I don't know if I would just pencil in Moss as beating Godou tomorrow. No. Godou. <laughs> I, yeah, that seems yeah, like a I'm steal. I mean, good. obviously, it's not guaranteed, but at plus 175 yeah, for the rider that just beat him. Yeah. Florian Lipowitz, minus 200. Ben O'Connor, plus 150. Huh. Pretty interesting one right there. Will O'Connor break completely tomorrow? I don't, I don't think know. So. Everyone's been saying that for I two weeks. So. Yeah. I, I, you know, he's fighting for the podium, you know? I mean, and his problem is his watts per kilo number is is, is probably 0.1 to 0.2 lower. It's not like he's yeah. some terrible rider that's going to blow up. He's not Thomas Folkler. Like, yeah. I think I think O'Connor takes this one. 
um, because today he completely, I mean, the last, the last one and a half kilometer was horrible for him. Uh, he, he paced the wrong, he paced, I mean, he, he was obviously trying to hang on as long as he could tomorrow. That doesn't have to be the case anymore. No. Um, so I think O'Connor finishes in front of Lipovic. Okay. I mean, cause if they're smart, I mean, he really just has to manage the gap. That's yeah. all he has to do. And he's got, he's a pretty good time trialist in under the right conditions. So it's just really about saving as much time as possible. Okay. O'Connor plus 150. Shkelma or Mateo Shkelma is a minus 230. Carlos Rodriguez plus 160. Skelmoza. Yeah, I agree. Mika Landa minus 200. Sepkus plus 150. Hmm. Kus would probably, Melanda would probably have to miss the move. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to trust him at this point, though. I don't know which Landa we're getting. Whew, that's a difficult one. That's a tough one. Who's positive? Sep Kus. Sep Kus. That's assuming Sep Kus is in the break. Yeah. Um, if he's not in the break and it's just a head to head, I'm going to pick Mikel Landa. I mean, I guess Landa could be in the breakaway too. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he kind of has to, right? I mean, he, he kind of has to try something. Yeah. I mean, what is just going to ride through the stage and finish. The thing is for, for Landa, it's a lot more difficult to, to, to get a free pass. I mean, or get a, a lot more pass. difficult. Uh, than Sepp Kuss, um, because, uh, you know, fifth, sixth, and seventh, they're going to fight for their position, you know? So, yeah. And like, also, I, I mean, I think even up to Roglic, I, I think everyone in front of Mika Landa does not want Mika Landa in the breakaway. Yeah. yeah well, he's not a, <laughs> he's not a good time trial. He's, he's, <laughs> we'll, we'll pull five minutes back on the station. <laughs> They're probably the worst time trial. He might, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. He is, he's incredibly so, bad. You know, you can factor in one and a half minute there, at least. Um, but uh, yeah, still, I'm going to pick Landa over Sepkus. Okay. I oh, mean, we're running long, but I've got two. I can't let these go. Pavel Sivakov, minus 250, Adam Yates, plus 175. Mm. Well, uh, where did Sivakov? Uh, Sivakov didn't do that great today, but he was better than Adam Yates. The uh, thing is, is it going to yeah, be tougher Yates for Sivakov? The and then, yeah, I mean, then Vlasov is not going to be in the break. Uh, sorry, Sivakov. Uh, Sivakov is not going to yeah. be in the break. Yeah, I don't think so. Yates. I go Yates, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then here's the last one. Primus Roglic, minus 250. Richard Carapaz, plus 175. Primus. Yeah, Primus. All right, Johan, do you have anything else to share before we get going? No, that's it. All right, thank yeah. you so much. Big, big, big day tomorrow. Yeah, huge, probably biggest day of the race. And then we'll be back for the stage 21 predictions, which yeah. uh, that's not, that's not going to be easy either. There's no easy days at this wealth. Uh, every day is a tough prediction. Well, for me, it's, it's a double day tomorrow. I have a race in, is my, my son races in the morning. And then we're going to watch this race in the afternoon. <laughs> and then you're going to be in Madrid on Sunday, right? On Sunday morning, he does another race. And then in the, in the afternoon, we're going to go watch the time trial in, in person. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we will talk to you tomorrow. Okay, thanks. All right, bye.